Hi, welcome to this tutorial on solving trig equations. Now, in this example, we've got to solve 5 sine theta plus 3 cos squared theta equals 5. For theta, greater than or equal to 0 degrees, but less than or equal to 360 degrees. So, how are we going to solve an equation like this? Well, what I notice is that this trig equation is in different trig functions. We've got a sine theta here and we've got a cosine function here, cos squared theta. And what we need to do is aim to get it into the same trig function. And seeing a cos squared theta here means that I can use an identity. And it's an identity that you should already know. It is sine squared of an angle, let's say theta in this case, plus cos squared of the same angle, theta, is identical to 1. And what we can do is we can rearrange this to make cos squared theta the subject. And if we subtract sine squared theta from both sides of this identity, then what we have is that cos squared theta is identical to 1 minus sine squared theta. So what I'd encourage you to do is try and learn these identities because you're going to need them so often when you're solving trig equations. Okay, so let's see how we can use this then. What we need to do is replace the cos squared theta by 1 minus sine squared theta. So if we do that, we therefore have 5 sine theta for the first term plus 3 multiplied by cos squared theta, which is now 1 minus sine squared theta. So pop that in that bracket there, and that equals 5. So all we need to do now is expand this bracket. So we've got 5 sine theta plus 3 minus 3 sine squared theta, and this equals 5. So what we've got is a quadratic equation now, all in one trig function, sine theta. And like any quadratic equation, we need to rearrange it, make it equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is take these three terms to the other side here of the equal sign. I'm going to subtract 5 sine theta, subtract 3, and add 3 sine squared theta to both sides. So doing that, what we get is 3 sine squared theta minus 5 sine theta, and then we'd have 5 take away 3, which is plus 2, and it would equal 0. Now, to solve this quadratic equation, you've got two options. You could aim to see if it factorizes, or you could use the quadratic formula. I'll show you that in a moment. But first of all, this does actually factorize. So, it factorizes to couple of brackets, like so, equaling 0. And we'd have 3 sine theta and sine theta. So when that multiplies out, we get 3 sine squared theta. Two numbers that multiply together to give plus 2. So that could be, say, a minus 2 and a minus 1. And if we look at it carefully, it's going to be there, minus 2, minus 1. Alright, so if you multiply this out, you're going to get minus 3 sine theta and minus 2 sine theta. That's going to give us the minus 5 sine theta. Okay, so what we could do now is put each of these factors equal to 0. So in other words, 3 sine theta minus 2 equals 0, or we have sine theta minus 1 that equals 0. Rearranging this equation by adding 2 to both sides and dividing by 3 will give sine theta equals 2 thirds. Or, if we take this equation by adding 1 to both sides, we get sine theta equals 1. Now, I did say earlier that when you have your quadratic equation and it equals 0, you could either solve it by factorizing, as we've done here, or you could use the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula in terms of sine theta, a quadratic equation in sine theta, would have something 
uh, like this. It would be of the form a sine squared theta plus b sine theta plus a constant c would equal zero. And if you're solving this kind of quadratic equation via the formula, we would therefore have that sine theta would be equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Where in this particular example, a, the coefficient of sine squared theta, would have been 3, b would have been minus 5, and c would have been plus 2. So if you put those values into this formula, you should find you come out with these answers for sine theta, 2 thirds and 1, when you use the plus and minus options. Alright, so that's an alternative way of finding sine theta. Now, moving on, all we've got to do now is just solve each of these two equations. Let's in fact start with this easy one here, sine theta equals 1. Let's just say that when sine theta equals 1. To get theta, we just inverse sine both sides, so we get theta equals the inverse sine of 1. And this is one that you should know the answers to immediately. But if you're unsure, one way that you could get the solutions is via a graph of, say, sine theta. If we were plotting y equals sine theta, we'd have a graph that looks something like this. The graph of sine theta starts at 0, so we would have it coming up like this. It goes to 1 at 90 degrees, back down to 0 at 180, to minus 1 at 270, and back to 0 at 360. So this is the graph of y equals sine theta. And we can see that it equals 1, let's just mark that in, when theta is 90 degrees. So, in other words, the solution to this equation for theta between 0 and 360 is going to be theta equals 90 degrees. Now, what about the other equation here? Let's just put it over here. When sine theta equals 2 thirds. To get theta, we just inverse sine both sides. So, theta equals the inverse sine of 2 thirds. Now you could do this one by a graphical method if you wished, but I'm going to show you the quadrant method. It's a method that I personally prefer, and if you're using the quadrant method as opposed to the graph, you just mark this in as naught degrees, and then what we do is we mark in the quadrants where sine would be positive, in this case positive two thirds, and that's in the first quadrant, and the second quadrant and always mark these two lines equally inclined to the horizontal line here. Mark in these angles and what do we require? We require angles between 0 and 360 degrees so that is starting from 0 turning in an anti-clockwise direction. So we start from here and the first solution will be a turn to the first blue line which we'll call theta. The next solution will be starting from here, turn to the next blue line, which is this one here, and that will be another possible solution. So, all you do now is just use your calculator. If you inverse sine two-thirds, make sure you're in degrees mode. What you should find you get is that theta equals 41.8 degrees to one decimal place. And that is this first angle here, the red theta. So this little blue angle in here is 41.8 degrees. So what that means is that this one over here, this little blue angle here is 41.8 degrees. So we can get the green theta by doing 180 degrees minus 41.8. So if you do that on your calculator, you'll find you get 138.2 degrees and that's also to one decimal place. So what we need to do now is just summarize our results and say we give them in ascending order we would have 41.8 degrees to one decimal place, we'd have the 90 degrees, that's an exact answer, 
and then we've got 138.2 degrees and that is rounded up to one decimal place. Alright, so we've got three angles in this range here. And so I hope you've been able to follow that tutorial and that brings us to the end of it. Okay?